and now look to Professor Raphael Cohen Almagor to continue the case for the opposition. Here, here. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm sorry I'm a bit uh, cold, so I hope you're going to hear me. <clears throat> First of all, I want to say it's good to be back in Oxford. It's good to be back at home. It's good to be back at the Union, where I spent a lot of my time during the 80s. <clears throat> and I want to thank you for organizing this. The fact that so many people are really deeply interested in such a, an issue, it's really warmed my heart. I want to start by a story. God is sitting with his loyal angel, Gabriel, and they're looking at the universe. And Gabriel is pointed to God and says, do you see this farmer? He is 70 years old. He has been plowing his field each and every day for the past 50 years. He has seven kids at home and a wife. Can't we help him? God looks at the farmer and nods his head and said, No, time is not ripe yet. Following Friday, same thing. Gabriel is sitting with God, watching the universe. And Gabriel is the stubbornest of all the angels. He doesn't take no for an answer. He points to the farmer and says, God, do you see this farmer? He's 70 years old. He has seven kids at home. He's been plowing his field for the past 50 years. Can't we help him? God looks at Gabriel as if, you know, I don't remember, nods his head and says, nope, he's not ready yet. And this goes on week after week after week and one Friday, God is really fed up with all this nonsense of Gabriel and said, okay, help him. So Gabriel is taking a metal of gold, wrap it in a sort of a something and throw it on the road. He knows that uh, the farmer goes home, is going to go to that road and he was hoping he's going to pick this gold. The farmer finishes work, <coughs> takes his carriage, goes on the road and stumbles over this gold, one of the uh, wheels broken down. He curses his luck. He's taken the gold that is wrapped with something, and just throws it away, fix the wheel, and goes to his home. God looks at Angel and Gabriel and tells him, you see, I told you so. He is not ready yet. The moral of the story is that the Palestinians and the Israelis have been saying time and again, the time is not ripe yet. If we are going to wait, it's going to be better. The result was, is bloody. More and more blood has been shed because people believe time is not ripe yet. I have said time and again, there should be three preconditions for peace between Israel and Palestine. One, there should be an Israeli leader who is committed to peace and who is willing to pay the price. Peace is precious and like any other precious things, it's costly, it's dear. There must be willingness, commitment to pay the price. Second, there should be a Palestinian leader who is committed to peace equally, and who also is willing to pay the price. And thirdly, both leaders should believe that the time is right. Because if one of them believes that they can wait and actually achieve more by waiting, there's not going to be peace. All these preconditions are necessary. If one of them is missing, there's no peace. Now anyone who tells me that there's no future for a two-state solution should bring an alternative, 
You say this is no? Okay. So what? I have only eight minutes, I'm sorry. If this is no, what do you suggest? I want to go with you one by one or the other alternatives and convince you that actually there's no other alternative. I mean, there are. But if you're going to suggest them, then the result is going to be far more costly, far more bloodier. So if actually you wanted the best interest of your own people, Israeli and Palestinians, if you really care for the future of the children, then you should support two-state solution. There's no other option. What are the alternatives? One-state solution. And there are several versions of this one-state solution. One is that it will be a Palestinian state at the expense of the Israeli state. This is the Hamas solution. As you can understand, some Israelis don't like it very much. <laughs> Second version of the one-state solution, the state of all its citizens, meaning it will be one unified state, Israel-Palestine. What's going to be the name of this entity? Israel-Palestine, God knows what. I don't know. But the fact of the matter is that very few people in Israel and Palestine support this. So whoever says one-state solution, what does he, she wants? to enforce this on the majority of the population who doesn't want it? This I found very curious. The third version of the one-state solution is the Iranian version. One bomb. <coughs> That's enough. Israel is very tiny. Those who undermine the two-state solution go and propose, why are you talking about one or two-state solution? There should be three-state solutions. Why? Because the PLO and the Hamas don't speak to one another. Well, this is their business to sort out, not the Israeli issue. And anyway, it's not going to be the solution, because if Hamas is going to continue controlling Gaza, there's not going to be peace. They're going to spoil everything. Now, other people are saying, the status quo, let's continue what there is. But in reality, there's no status quo. The issue's deteriorating all the time. Why is that? Because the Palestinians continue with terrorism, and because the Israelis are putting the settlements. And both of them equally spoil peace. So actually there's no sort of status quo. It doesn't exist. It exists only in the imagination of those who support this. Then there are some people who say, let's continue what we have with Netanyahu. If you think carefully, what Netanyahu does is exactly the autonomy plan of begging in 1977, 1979. But if we're going to allow this to continue, all those who negate two-state solution, you are going to see that Netanyahu and his government are going to annex Area C under the Oslo Accord, 52% of the West Bank. Is this is what you want? To have a very shrinking sort of a piece of land for the Palestinians? This is ridiculous. This is a recipe for disaster because no sane Palestinian will go and accept this. And then the suggestions about confederations. Confederations with Jordan, confederation with Egypt, and the new Middle East of Shimon Peres, confederation between Israel, Jordan, the Palestinian, and Egypt. Wonderful. You read the book and you clap. The only thing is who actually support this thing? Nobody in Jordan, nobody in Egypt, the Palestinian, uh, and the Israelis, uh. So how are you going to do something that nobody wants? So what we are left with, actually, is only one solution, I'm very sorry to say. It's true that maybe now we don't have the right leaders to go about this. But if you're going to throw away a two-state solution, it's like taking this box. And throw it away. And I'm sure Mr. Harris wouldn't like it. <laughs> Thank you very much.